All right, so here's my mock-up of my version 2 Starling acoustic engine. Whatever the hell you want to call it. I think it's a Starling engine. It's uh, closer resembles a Fluidine when you look at Starlings. But again, I like the fact that it has two moving parts, which are the diaphragms. That's what needs improvement on this project. And I'm thinking of adding some type of flange or something to get rid of the rubber bands and latex. I can't stand that with this project. It works for the small model, but to do something real powerful, it needs a diaphragm that will withstand the wear. But that's what I have figured out. That's going off CME 112's uh, version 20 or experiment 24, I think. Uh, he's done some fantastic work. I also wonder by upsizing. I went to one inch because I happen to have the pipe. The fittings were expensive. That tee was ten dollars. The union was a twelve, and the elbows were about three a piece. They're very expensive, and uh, if I didn't have the pipe, I probably wouldn't have done this project like this. And I'm almost out of oxyacetylene gas, so that might be something else to hold me up on this project. But. Uh, what I'm going to do before I get this model going is I'm doing something different here and here. No more rubber bands and latex. I'm going to do some type of real diaphragm. And then I will do the regenerator over here. And uh, the heat will be applied here. And I'm going to try and get some really good measurements. Um, I'm not sure by upsizing the pipe if I don't have to upsize these chambers also and also I wonder uh, how big can I go with these obviously by what I know about diaphragm pumps the larger the diaphragm the more oscillation you get from here to here so that's more driving force and what can I do with that and what speed will it be done at so, uh, I'm really liking this project. There is, a uh, version two. And I'll have more this weekend. And if anybody's got anything smart to say, say it now, before I solder this thing up. Because, like I said, the fittings are expensive. But I'm also soldering this time instead of brazing. Except for here and here. Here I have to braze because I don't have the fitting to make that work. And there. So, there's version one, and I'm rolling with it. I don't think I have it figured out properly, but I'm just going to go ahead and build it. Here's my new idea for getting the diaphragm to not rip a piece of tubing to brace on. Alright, so here's the new one inch model. All soldered up. Switch the diaphragm chambers over. Made a rounded flange sort of thing so the diaphragm won't rip so easily. The same on my upper chamber here. And now I'm going to get ready to put the diaphragms on. Okay, here's the new model completed except for the last tape seal. So in this model, I start out with one magnet, but I can add more. Same with this one in here. And then uh, I got this union so I can take it apart real easy, except that the tape does ruin this every time you take it apart. But I can change out what I'm using for the regenerator. Okay, as you can see here, this model's already changed a lot. I'm not quite finished yet. But uh, after I realized that I wasn't gonna get this to work, I uh, did some extra reading on laminar flow, beta sterlings, uh, a whole mess of stuff. And I realized I was doing this all wrong. I can't even believe I got the last one to oscillate at all, to be honest with you. Uh, I had the regenerator pretty much right, but there's a lot of things I had wrong with it, which uh, I'll explain a little more, hopefully. 
once I do get this running. I'm not sure how this is going to work out from the heat, but it's the only thing I had right on hand because I only have a limited time to do my experiments today. But this is going to, I'm going to drill a hole in this. Uh, I'm going to get it out of the piece of copper. I beat that through this cork that I bought at the hardware store I saw. And I'm going to make a restrictor to put inside the union right here on the top end of the shell. And uh, hopefully with that and some of the other improvements I made, this one should actually run right, I hope. As you can see, I built this so I can take it apart pretty quickly because uh, one thing you're for sure going to go through a lot when you start playing with this is the uh, big bag of rubber bands, gloves, and lots of electric tape. So I can actually work on it pretty easily. And then you see I put the restrictor plate in, get ready to put the next diaphragm on, and then I'll fire it up. So finally I'm getting some pretty decent sustained oscillations. You can see I'm heating here really low with the propane. If I turn it up too much I start melting the joints. I already had that problem once and definitely caused air leak and I got some copper stuck in there. But now as you can see I'm not getting the oscillations I want but I'm getting the oscillations that this machine seems to be tuned for. So uh this looks like this is going to be a really good project, and I can't wait to get going uh, a little more later.